you raise your hands if you think prayer is important. All right. Raise your hands if you think you pray enough. Good. Honesty. That's awesome. <laughs> no, no one's hands were up for the last one. But, you know, what's interesting is we, we all know the importance of prayer and we value the importance of prayer and we all recognize that we don't pray enough. So why is this? And it's got to thinking, you know, if you've ever led a group of people before, that you know they usually do a better job or have greater performance if they know the why behind something and the benefits behind something. So maybe if we knew the why, some of the whys behind we, whys behind why we pray and some of the benefits to prayer, perhaps we would pray more often, just like from the roundabout example, knowing some of the whys and the benefits of roundabouts, maybe we're more apt to go through them. So that's what we're going to look at today. We're going to look at some of the reasons why we pray and some of the benefits um, to prayer. So before we jump right in, though, I would like to go to the Lord in prayer. So if you could join me, that would be great. Heavenly Father, we just uh, lift up today, Lord, and Lord, we, uh, as we open your word, Lord, we just ask that you speak to us through it, Lord, help me to be an accurate vessel Lord, and I just pray that whatever it is you want us to take away from today and apply it, Lord, that, that we sense that from you and we, and, we take, and we take that away and apply it to our lives. Lord, we ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, if you'd like to open your Bibles, if you have them with you, or you can follow along on the screen uh, to Matthew chapter 6, verses uh, 5 through 8. It says, um, Jesus is talking here. He says, when you pray... Don't be like the hypocrites who love to pray publicly on street corners and in the synagogues where everyone can see them. I tell you the truth, that is all the reward they will ever get. But when you pray, go away by yourself, shut the door behind you, and pray to your Father in private. Then your Father, who sees everything, will reward you. When you pray, don't babble on and on as people of other religions do. They think their prayers are answered merely by repeating their words again and again. Don't be like them, for your Father knows exactly what you need even before you ask Him. So Jesus, uh, in that text, He's showing us that when we pray, we should keep two things in mind. And the first thing that we should keep in mind is, why do we pray? Or why should we pray? And in verse 5, Jesus shows why the hypocrites, who are later defined as the Pharisees and the, and the scribes, why they pray. And he says that when you pray, don't be like the hypocrites who love to pray publicly on street corners and in the synagogues where everyone can see them. I tell you the truth, that's all the reward they will ever get. So Jesus is describing here the, uh, the Pharisees and the, scri- and the scribes where they prayed where they could be kind of the center of attention in a crowd. And their main, their, their main emphasis was so people could see them and people could see how holy they were and so they could get praise for that, for the words that they were saying. And Luke 18, uh, 11 describes an example of a Pharisee kind of really putting himself in the center of a prayer and what, he, what, we, what we're about to share is something he actually says out loud. It's bad enough that he's actually thinking this, but check out what he says out loud. The Pharisee stood by himself and prayed. Just imagine you pray like this. God, I thank you that I'm not like other people. <laughs> Robbers, evildoers, adulterers. I can imagine him pointing at someone, even this tax collector. That's the most unfriendly prayer I think I've ever heard. (laughs) And clearly, this example, this Pharisee, he does not recognize that we all fall short of God's glorious standard. And, And it seems to me he's pointing out people as they're walking by, comparing their sin to himself and puffing himself up as someone who's very holy. And what's funny is that God sees sin as sin. There's not this weighting measure thing that I think he is saying here. And what's funny is as he's pointing out everybody's sin, he's actually sinning through pride. So 
Jesus talks about the reward that the hypocrites will have, and he, and he mentions that, I tell you the truth, all, that's all the reward that they'll ever get. And what he's talking about is simply the reward that they'll get is, is simply praise from others. That's it. Just, wow, that was a nice prayer. Wow, you're eloquent with words. That's the extent of the reward that they're going to get. But when we pray, our intention should not be to impress a group of people or to compare our sins to someone else. When we pray, our intention should, to, should be to be intimate with God and having fellowship with God. And Jesus talks about this in verse 6. He says, but when you pray, go away by yourself, shut the door behind you, and pray to your Father in private. Then your Father, who sees everything, will reward you. So in contrast to the hypocrites, God is saying that the most important thing that, that we can do when praying is to, to connect with him. And God says that when we seek him, that he'll reward us. So if we have the choice between someone saying, hey, that was a great prayer, or man, you seem holy, or a blessing from God, what will we choose? So another thing I just want to make very clear about this passage is this verse, this verse does not say that all prayer needs to be in private. Although Jesus did model often in the Gospels intimate, quiet time with God. But also throughout Scripture, there was prayer in a church community. And that's important that, that we know that, that there were, that was also mentioned as well in the Our Father and, and several other uh, times in the Bible. So what Jesus is really getting after here is he's getting, what, he's, what he's saying is that we shouldn't pray in public for public recognition for ourselves. So the issue really is, why do we pray? Is it to impress people or is it to connect with God? So really, I think what this verse is saying is that when we pray, we need to humbly come before God. And in James 4.10, it says, Humble yourselves before the Lord, and He will lift you up. And the word in the Greek uh, for lift is hufsawo, which, which means spiritual uplifting and revived. So essentially, if we humble ourselves before God, we will be spiritually uplifted and revived. So number one, Jesus tell, one of the things that Jesus tells us to keep in mind while we are praying is to ask ourselves the question, why do we pray? The second thing that Jesus tells us to keep in mind while we are praying is who are we trying to get to hear us? And he warns what people of other religions do in, in Matthew 6, 7 when he says, when you pray, don't babble on and on as people of other religions do. They think their prayers are answered merely by repeating their words again and again. So at the time of Christ, many people would use long prayers and they would name different gods and they would just keep repeating and babble on and on as Jesus is talking about here. And they would just list off these different gods and hoping that there was a God that heard them and that God would help them. So it was rather superstitious in the sense where they would keep repeating, keep repeating. And you can see just the, the, the depravity of man and just the hopelessness of, of just searching um, where, where they would continually name different gods who they thought um, could help them. And they would just keep doing that until they felt like they were helped. So Jesus is, 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 is coming out against that. He's not coming out against long prayers. So he's not saying, you know, the Baptist preacher who prays for five or ten minutes that he needs to make that 30-second deal. But because Jesus had a really long prayer once, and that was, uh, that was accounted for in Luke 6 when he, was, when he prayed all night selecting his disciples. So what Jesus really is condemning here is meaningless verbiage in prayer. What he wants to hear is sincere expressions of the heart 
to the one true God. And Jesus says it simply in verse 8, don't be like them, for your Father knows exactly what you need even before you ask Him. I want to derail us a little bit here because I think this particular verse can be very confusing. And uh, one of the questions that, that I get, and I'm sure you've probably asked this question yourself or maybe someone's asked this question to you, is if God knows what I need before I ask Him, why even ask? What's the point? Well, the reason is that in prayer, that we acknowledge our need and our dependence on God. And prayer is really our basis for communicating with God. And God, He does things in answer to prayer that He would not otherwise do. In James 4, 2, it talks about you desire and you do not have, so you murder. You covet and you cannot obtain, so you fight and quarrel. You do not have because you do not ask. We do not have because we do not ask. And I, and I think prayer can sometimes be underestimated. In James 5.16, he says, Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. One of my favorite quotes uh, that Mother Teresa said is, when I pray, coincidences happen. When I stop, they don't. <laughs> Preach it, sister, or it's mother. Uh, but per, it's perfect. When I pray, coincidences happen. When I stop, they don't. Lee Strobel, um, who wrote The Case for Christ, the movie came out about this time last year. Um, he was a pastor in Chicago um, shortly after he came to, to faith, and he, was, he talked about one of his books about a baptism uh, service that they had, and you know, people came down to the front, were baptized, and a woman came to him to be baptized, and on the spot, her husband popped up out of his chair, came down, received Christ, and was baptized. And after, after the service, this man's sister came up to, to Lee Strobel and said, you know, I've been praying for my brother for nine years to accept Christ. Praying for my brother for nine years to accept Christ. So maybe you've been praying for a wayward son or daughter for 10 years a spiritually confused parent for, for 15 years, or, or maybe you've been praying for a friend from, from high school or college for, for 20 years. And all throughout the years, you have not seen any evidence whatsoever of a spiritual awakening. And a thousand times, maybe you said, you know, I'm just going to stop praying for this person. You know, what's the use? And maybe, maybe you have stopped praying for this person. And you've already said, what's the use? But this woman would tell us, never give up. Never cease praying. Because the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. I just want to define righteous real quick. Scripture says that a righteous person is someone who is right with God. So how do we get right with God? Romans 3, 22 to 25 says, we are made right with God by placing our faith in Jesus Christ. And this is true for everyone who believes, no matter who we are. For everyone has sinned, we all fall short of God's glorious standard. Yet God freely and graciously declares that we are righteous. He did this through Christ Jesus when he freed us from the penalty for our sins. For God presented Jesus as the sacrifice for sin. And people are made right with God when they believe that Jesus sacrificed his life, shedding his blood. So if I've put my faith in Christ, 
is the only thing I have to do is to ask God and he'll give me everything I want. This is also a little tricky. (laughs) And God, he gives us three answers to prayer. He'll say yes to some things. He'll say no to some things. And he'll say, hold on, let's wait. And this can take a whole other sermon to flesh out this particular question of why does God give the answers that he gives at the time in which he gives them. But I wanted to share with you Psalm 37, 4. It says, take delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. So as we engage with intimate fellowship with God, our desires are actually going to become more like his desires. So our heart's desires are really becoming united with God. And thereby, God gives us those desires that are united with God. However, even these desires that, that God gives us and these answers to these prayers can still come in the form of yes, no, or wait. My father-in-law, um, he had a, he had, his desire was for uh, members of his family to come to know Jesus. And he would have very much liked to have seen this happen um, on earth. And he passed away about eight years ago. And at his funeral, uh, we shared an audio testimony um, of something he did at our church a few months prior And one of the people he had been praying for accepted Christ. So one of the reasons why we one of the reasons why we pray is to communicate to God our needs and our desires, and God will answer yes, no, or wait. But He won't give an answer if we're not asking. And the encouraging thing is to keep asking because God promises an answer in Matthew 7, 7. He says, keep on asking and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on knocking and the door will be open to you. Keep on, keep on, keep on. This may mean that we may need to pray for some time, just like the lady in uh, uh, Lee Strobel's story that if we pray once and we don't get an answer, we seem to keep praying and keep praying. So we talked about some of the reasons why we pray, but what are some of the benefits to prayer? I'm just going to briefly share with you four benefits benefits that I've personally found in prayer. And the first is to be strengthened. And Isaiah 40, 29 to 31 says, He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. One of the the greatest things that uh, strength in my faith in the last year is to go to a couple praise and worship gatherings in the community. And I remember when I was at these gatherings, I was intentionally just seeking God, just kind of just having this one-on-one time with God. And I felt as if God was actually caring for me at that moment, like a, like a caring parent, that he was tending to me and renewing me. And as I felt his strength, I just let go. And I was renewed. So I think that through prayer and seeking God that he will renew our strength. The second benefit that I found in prayer is help. I found that prayer helps us in our time of need. Hebrews 4, 15 to 16 says, says, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses. But we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he did not sin. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence, so that we may receive mercy and find grace 
to help us in our time of need. This verse is probably one of my favorite verses in the Bible. And what I love so much about this is God promises that he is able to empathize with us. Not just sympathize, but he's able to empathize with us. And we can all sympathize kind of with anyone. Where we can, you know, I'm sorry, sorry you're going through this, or I'm sorry this happened to you. But empathy is that you've actually gone through it. You've actually have been in that person's shoes. And what this says is that our great high priest, Jesus, has gone through everything that we could ever possibly go through. When he came to earth as a man, he went through temptation, ridicule, pain, loss, persecution, death. Everything we can ever possibly go through, any category we can ever possibly go through, he has gone through and he can relate to us. And we can have comfort that he understands that we're going through what we're going through. And it also says in this text that there's going to be a time where we're going to have a need. And Jesus, and Jesus promises here that when we go through a need, that we can approach him and he'll, re, he'll be giving us two things, mercy and grace to get us through. So this imagery of love in this text I mean, it blows me away. It blows me away that we can approach God at whatever struggle we're going through and he's going to be there and he's going to understand. So the, the first benefit of prayer is to be strength and the second benefit is help in our time of need. The third benefit is help in determining God's will. James uh, 1.5 says, if you need wisdom, if you want to know what God wants you to do, ask him. And he will gladly tell you, he will not resent your asking. Back in 2009, my wife, uh, Kimberly, and I were looking for a home. And uh, we, we, we found a home that we, we really liked. But it was above our price, uh, our price range. And we just sought God on it. We asked, you know, God, should we put an offer in? And we felt as if God was saying yes to us. So we put an offer in well below the asking price. Just saying, Lord, this is what you want. You're going to have to work out the details because this is all we got. And uh, well, we've been in the house about nine years. So <laughs> we asked, you know, he gave us wisdom. He said, don't go over this, this amount, and he provided. So if we ask for wisdom, he'll provide. The last benefit to prayer um, that, that I found is help in spiritual warfare. And in Ephesians, it talks about the struggles that we have in this world. It's really not against humans but against powerful spiritual beings, the spiritual realm that, that we face every day if our eyes are open to it. And I'm just going to skip this uh, for time, but um, in Ephesians 18 to 20, one of the best spiritual weapons that, that Paul is talking about is prayer. And look at how many times he talks about prayer in this section. It says, and pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for the Lord's people. Pray also for me that whenever I speak, words may be given to me so I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel, which why I'm an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. So in that text, Paul is talking about a few things. He's talking about Pray in the Spirit for all kinds of things. So essentially, Paul is, is saying, pray for everything. Nothing is off the table. So pray for everything. And then he's talking about, you know, praying for the Lord's people. So praying for the church. As we are engaging in battle, in spiritual battle, I mean, Satan's going to come after us hard if we are stepping out in faith. And then he also asked to, to, for for folks to pray for him. So I take that as, you know, pray for spiritual, your spiritual leadership of your church because that, again, you're stepping out in faith. You're stepping out where Satan doesn't want us to go. But, but Paul talks about the spiritual weaponry that we have in prayer and the importance in which to engage in that. So essentially, Paul is saying, hey, we need to be prayer warriors. 
and that, that's, that is an effective weapon in, our, in the spiritual battle that we have. So to close up here, today we talked about some of the reasons why we pray and some of the benefits to prayer. And as I've been preparing for this week, I felt personally uh, convicted that my prayer life needs to improve. And based upon our very brief survey <laughs> at the beginning of the service, possibly uh, that can be said of a few of you. So we all need to join in. We all need to join in the battle and use the weaponry of prayer. We need to join in in battle and praying for everything from our family to our friends to our country, everything. We need to pray for one another. And we need to pray for our church. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, you have laid it out for us today. Lord, and Lord, you want to engage with us, Lord, in intimate fellowship. Lord, and the benefits to prayer we name four, but the benefits to prayer are so much more than that. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you are the great high priest that we can come to, Lord, and that you will meet us in whatever circumstance we're going through with grace and mercy, Lord, to, to get us through. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for being a God who loves us, cares for us, and walks this journey of life with us. Lord, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.